Have you ever wished that you could fly while stuck in traffic? What about a flying car? That's undoubtedly just a wild conjecture that M might think of for the upcoming James Bond production. Not so, the RLF electric flying automobile is the first to get permission from the government to fly. Models are anticipated to be made public in 2025. Flying automobiles have long been a staple of science fiction, however in recent years, it has begun to appear as though this dream could actually come true. The US Federal Aviation Administration FAA has granted permission for RLF Aeronautics Model A flying car to take to the skies. This is the first flying automobile to get this certification. Jim DeCovney, CEO of RLF, stated in a press release, we're excited to acquire this certification from the FAA. It enables us to be one step closer to providing commuters with a quicker, more ecologically friendly option, saving people and businesses hours each week. For cars, this is a tiny step, but a massive one for airplanes. In October 2022, the public first saw the single or dual passenger R left Model A. The $300,000 all-electric car, which can fly and park in spaces made for flightless automobiles, is already available for pre-order. It can also be driven on conventional roads and costs that much to buy. Although the automobile takes off and settles vertically, it uses the sides of the car as wings to fly horizontally while in the air. In the middle of the car, there will be a bubble light capsule where the passengers will sit. The RLF Model A has eight propellers, four on either side of the central capsule, powered by four small motors instead of one giant motor. Vertical takeoffs and landings are made possible by the COS mesh covered blades, which allow air to flow through it. According to RLF, the vehicle will have a 200 mile range on land and a somewhat greater than half that distance in the air, with a flight mode range of 110 miles. The FAA is still developing regulations for electrical vertical takeoff and landing EV toll because of the new nature of the vehicle. By the end of 2025, RLF Aeronautics hopes to start shipping the first units to clients. Only whitelisted areas will now be available for RLF flying car owners to launch and land their vehicles. According to DeCovney, in addition to a regular driver's license for on-road use, they will probably only need a straightforward Part 107 drone license in order to operate the vehicle. The head of RLF indicated that for the time being, the company is focusing on a small production run with high-cost units, which may deter some prospective customers due to the RLF Model A's astronomical pricing. A less expensive Model Z, the $35,000 Model Z, will begin mass production by 2035, according to the company. That particular flying car will also have increased autonomy and room for four to six passengers. According to DeCovney, it will be able to travel up to 300 miles on the road and 200 miles in the air. Up to 500 kilometers in the air using hydrogen power. Likewise, he predicts that all locations other than blacklisted areas will allow for the vehicles to take off and land. The concept of flying automobiles may strike many people as unrealistic, complex, and far-fetched. Nowadays, however, there are functional flying automobiles. From private air taxis to commercial jetpacks, they are real and presently available in a variety of forms. Then, how do flying automobiles work? Flying cars are typically smaller than commercial aircraft and lack wings in favor of rotors. The airplane can take off vertically and land vertically thanks to these rotors. While tilt rotors increase efficiency in forward flight over longer distances, multi-rotors aid in minimizing hover flight noise. Electricity, gas or oil, or hybrid fuels can all be used to power flying vehicles. However, electricity is probably the fuel source that will be most practical in the future. The driver's input is split between front wheel steering and vehicle tilting, depending on the terrain and speed being employed. Flying speed would be between 0 and 60 miles per hour on the ground and between 31 and 112 miles per hour in the air. The widespread availability of these vehicles can be both extremely frightening and very exciting. But depending on how you look at it, 
flying automobiles will have a big impact on how we travel, live, and work in the next few decades. They will offer door-to-door -door service for transportation both on the ground and in the air, which will ease urban traffic congestion. It's interesting to note that they don't also occupy the high altitude that long-distance air transfers typically require. The majority of flying cars will be electrically propelled and have noise and emission-free interiors. This will play a significant role in improving the passenger's overall traveling experience. One of the unique characteristics of flying cars is how they operate during takeoff and landing, the two crucial procedures at the beginning and end of any vehicle traveling through the air. Flying automobiles can use these for primary takeoff and landing toll modes. 1. VTOL Vertical Takeoff Landing This mode features vertical takeoff and landing for flying cars. For either landing or departure, there is no need for runways. As a result, travelers now have the freedom to travel wherever they like. This mode is used by some flying cars, such as the Mahler Skycar M400. 2. VTHL Vertical Takeoff Horizontal Mode In this location, flying automobiles land on a runway after taking off vertically. In other words, landing needs a runway, however takeoff doesn't. This tall mode is used by flying vehicles like the Boeing X-37. 3. HTVL Horizontal Takeoff Vertical Landing Mode This is the opposite of VHTL in that the vehicles take off and land on a runway while landing vertically. Hence, runways are needed just for takeoff and not for landing. This model was utilized in Philip Bono's Hyperion SSDO spacecraft. 4. HTOL Horizontal Takeoff Landing Mode For takeoff and landing in this mode, you need a runway. This is the most frequent mode for fixed-wing aircraft, hence runways or other ground infrastructure must constantly be accessible. The Transition, Heaviside, and PAL-5 Liberty are three examples of flying cars that operate in this manner. One of the most crucial technologies that will determine how flying cars function or don't in the future is the fuel used in them. Flying cars generally use one of three different power kinds. 1. Electric power, due to its lower noise and emission levels, particularly in urban areas, this propulsion type is by far the most popular. The utilization of this kind of fuel still faces some significant obstacles today, though. Examples include the amount of time it takes to recharge the battery, its energy density, its typical cost, or its lifespan. Having said that, are you excited to try one of those? Let us know your thoughts in the comment box below. If you've watched up to this point, thank you so much. For more videos about TVs, Toyota, Tesla, Ford, and the most recent auto news, please consider subscribing to Tech Addicts.